I've introduced the concept of the trust to you, which owns the asset, but you control it. So you have the ability to do whatever you want with it, but it's not in your name. And this is the key point. Because in order to get multiple properties, this is what happens. G'day guys, and welcome back to another installment with the Ugroot Investor. Today is gonna to be an interesting one. We're following up on the infinite money loop. Um, and before we jump in, must do a disclaimer because these topics are quite sensitive. So look, the information I'm providing is for general education um, and entertainment purposes only. I don't know what your personal circumstances are and I don't know what's best for you personally, but I do encourage you highly to go seek legal and professional accounting or financial service help if this information is useful, don't forget to uh, hit that like and subscribe button and let's jump right into it. In the last video, which I'll leave a link for you here, we ran through the four structures that you can use to purchase real estate in Australia. We also ran right at the end of the video, a introduction to what trust structures and combination structures look like that give you a little bit more borrowing leverage and flexibility. So in this particular video, I'm going to show you how the difference between buying as an individual and the difference between buying in a trust structure can make to your portfolio and how you can leverage this to get more real estate than you thought was possible. Let's jump in. So as an individual, let's say that you have $100,000 of income, which we're going to use standard throughout this video. The first point of call is to ask the bank, can I borrow some money? The bank's going to look at you and say, what's your assets? And you're going to say, none at this stage. What's your liabilities? And you'll say, none. And then they'll say, what's your income? And you go, well, my income is $100,000. To keep things simple, the bank in this example is going to say, well, you have $100,000 worth of income. Therefore, you can borrow $1 million from us. So using that information that the bank's given you, you go to the property market and you seek out a property with a value of 500,000 or half a million dollars. This particular property, like what most people invest in, is a negatively geared piece of real estate. You buy it for $500,000 and after all expenses, costs you $10,000 from your pocket. So at this stage, You've gone to the bank and you said, how much can I borrow? They've said $1 million based on your $100,000 income. You go off and you purchase a negatively geared piece of real estate for $500,000, which would mean you would have $500,000 left. The kicker here is that the property itself costs you 10 grand to maintain. So when you go back to the bank and say, can I borrow more money? the bank says, okay, well, let's take a look at your assets, liabilities, and income. They'll now look at your $100,000 income, and then they'll look at the real estate, which is costing you 10 grand, and say, well, your effective income is actually $90,000, which means that your maximum borrowing capacity now is $900,000, not 1 million. So the second property that you can purchase can only be to a maximum of $400,000. And if this property is also negatively geared, you can quickly see why most people can only purchase ever one or two pieces of real estate and can never get any more than that. On the flip side, let's run the example again, but use it for positive cash flow. You go to the bank and you say, how much can I borrow? Running through the same questions, they say, well, how much have you got? $100,000. Based on that, you can borrow $1 million. So you go off, you do a little bit more research than last time, and you find a property for $500,000 that's going to give you $10,000 of additional income after all expenses are paid. Now, when you go to the bank and say, can I borrow more money? They go, okay, well, let's take a look at your circumstance. You've got $100,000 of income from your job and an additional $10,000 coming in from the real estate, giving you an effective income of $110,000. And so we are comfortable 
to lend you $1.1 million. So the difference between the negative cash flow property and the positive cash flow property being a 10 grand difference on either side is the equivalent of $200,000 worth of borrowing power. So you can go and buy a property now at the value of $600,000 instead of $400,000. Or equally, you could buy another $500,000 piece of real estate. Make sure that it's positive cash flow. You can see here with this example that a spiral starts to happen in your favor. And this is how you can start to purchase more and more real estate. If you get more income from the real estate, it goes towards your serviceability, allowing you to purchase more and more real estate. Now, this still limits you because after two properties, even though you have a total portfolio value higher than the negatively geared counterpart, you still have completely limited your serviceability and you cannot borrow any more money until you either pay off debt or sell one of the pieces of real estate. And this is where trusts come in. Now, I'm not going to run through all of the intricate details of the trust that was for the last video, and I encourage you to go take a look at it. But to keep a very quick summary, the structures that we're going to talk about here is you have a shelf company, which the trust acts on behalf of, and then you as the individual are the beneficiary to the trust. So anything that the trust purchases you get the direct benefit for, but you are not purchasing it directly in your name, unlike the examples of the individual that we just walked through. So when you purchase real estate in the trust, the trust itself owns the real estate and you are just beneficiary to it. You have the control of the trust, controlling what it purchases, when it purchases, and where the monies are distributed based on how the trust is set up, but you don't own the assets inside the trust. The trust owns the assets. And this is the key point in how to progress faster purchasing real estate than what the average person will do. Let's take a look at how the trust handled the situation instead of the individual. So you go to your accountant and you set up a shell company with a family discretionary trust. Using this trust, you go to the bank and say, can I borrow money please? And the bank turns around to you and says, what's your income? Well, the trust has no income. It was literally just set up. It has no record of receiving any form of income whatsoever. So in order to get around that, what you do is you guarantee the income for the trust. So the trust turns to you and says, oh, excuse me, um, can I use your income? And you go, yeah, sure. My income is $100,000. So you take that back to the bank and you say, I will guarantee the trust's serviceability based on my $100,000 income. And the bank goes, okay, well, based on your $100,000 income, the trust can borrow $1 million. So then you direct the trust to go off and purchase real estate equal to the $1 million borrowing capacity that it has. And remembering, of course, that the trust owns the properties and not you. So this is where it gets interesting. We've just explained how purchasing positive cash flow real estate can help leverage you to get more and more borrowing capacity. And now I've introduced the concept of the trust to you, which owns the asset, but you control it. So you have the ability to do whatever you want with it, but it's not in your name. And this is the key point. Because in order to get multiple properties, this is what happens. You go to your accountant and you set up Trust A. You run through the process that we just went through. Apply to the bank for loans. The bank says, what's your income? You guarantee Trust A's income. And therefore, the bank will lend the trust $1 million. And that trust then goes off and purchases two pieces of real estate. The next thing you do is you go back to your accountant and you set up Trust B. 
going to a different financial institution, because if you go to the same one, they know that you set up the original trust and therefore will have visibility on what the portfolio is doing. But you go to bank B instead and bank B goes, what's your assets and liabilities? And you can honestly say as the individual, I have no assets, I have no liabilities because trust A owns those assets and liabilities. You don't tell the bank that you have that trust with those assets and liabilities in it. You don't have to, it's not a legal requirement. However, because you don't legally own it, you can truthfully answer the question, I don't have any assets and liabilities in my personal name. So the bank B turns to trust B and says, well, what income do you have? You put your hand up and say, I have an income of $100,000. Bank B looks at that and says, okay, cool. We're going to lend you $1 million. So you then, with control of trust B, purchase two pieces of real estate to a total value of $1 million. Then you go to your accountant and you set up trust C and you repeat the process. Now there are some limitations to this. When a trust purchases a real estate, it is effectively borrowing 100% of the money. 80% comes from the financial institution or the bank and 20% comes from you. You still need to produce the deposit. If you're purchasing a piece of real estate for $500,000, then you need a 20% deposit. That means that you need to produce $100,000 and the bank will produce the remaining $400,000. So while on paper, you can purchase as many pieces of real estate as you like, the reality is, is that you still need to produce the deposit but this is now the only thing that's holding you back from purchasing more and more real estate. That is why positive cash flow is key. If each of these properties that you can see on the diagram produces additional income, then you generate deposits faster. The faster you generate a deposit, the quicker you can purchase your next piece of real estate. And that's how the trust systems work. I hope this video has provided you with some insight as to how you can take your investing to the next level and purchase more real estate than you currently have in your portfolio, if that is your target. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. I know this one was a complicated topic. I tried to simplify it as much as possible. It really means a lot that you've gotten to the end of the video. If you like the content, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys.